Alrighty guys and welcome back today. We're going to be spawning in on Rotten Fields. Now I have a teammate behind me to the right hand side. I quickly want to let you guys know that I am in a duo queue. Therefore there will be two gamers in here including myself and the other two are going to be solo queue. I've kind of gone up the harvester a little bit for some field of view. I know where multiple generators are right now. I don't really want to work on the harvester gen but I want to know who the killer is and just like that I do. I know I'm versing a spirit so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to work on this generator. Getting both of these gens done will be very crucial for success based on how close they are to proximity in the basement. The basement will always spawn in the middle of the map on the shack on rotten fields so keep that in mind getting the generators done around it will help benefit you for your mid to late game now the next thing i want to know is if the killer has ruin when i work on that generator i'm going to instantly let go to find out and we're going to find out she does not have ruin therefore chances of her running corner ground without ruin are pretty slim that being said she could be looking for consistency through multiple engine targets through either sloppy or even strider if she wants to hear you and make a phase anticipation of movement now strider is commonly known as the best perk in the game for spirit i do agree with that to a degree but i know you can run builds without strider and make it work if you have enough practice but if you're just starting out a spirit strider is really good barbecue pop these are some really good perks for you even corrupt to funnel people together depending on your play style or preference with a lot of practice you could look at running devour hope horde and ground thrilling and pop as well that would also be another choice also depends on your add-ons too if you're going to be running movement speed add-ons etc a spirit stacking double movement speed add-ons being the farthest glasses and i can't think of the other one's name off the top of my head, you can expect to be moving at 231% movement speed, 1% quicker than the hillbilly in its current state right now at 230%, 2.2 second rev or instant down. Now, my Jenny's nearly done. Another generator has been completed. I will breed and get this generator completed because the last thing I want is her coming across the map right now and getting Pop Goes a Weasel regression on this objective. That is good. Now, you instantly know the other generator was eyeing up, which is all the way over there to the right-hand side, but I'm going to go wide and see what she decides to do. She's on my scratch marks, which is fine. I plan to leave this anyways and come over here. Let's see what she decides to do. She feels like the kind of gamer that's going to follow me and not cut me off. Now, this could be a little bit of a dangerous play, but I can play this Harvester against her and there's nothing she can do. She can phase here and fast vault this with phasing. You can jump across it with Dead Hard or Sprint Burst. That would be the best play, but a lot of killers actually lunge across that. If you're 115% movement speed, you can walk across. If you're 110, like a spirit, you have to lunge across. So if she comes over here with phasing, my players go up the harvester, go for the vault, and then walk on the cushioning here on top of the hay bales. That is my play. Her counterplay is phase across and then lunge with the phase, which will get a successful hit on me, and that'll put me in a really awkward situation. Now, I know what she has to do to counter my play, but she could, for all she knows, I could hide, I could run through the corner, I could walk away. There's so many different plays I can currently do right now, but I know which play I'm going to make, regardless of the direction that she decides to come in. The fact that I have a teammate, Adam, you see that crow respawn? 15 seconds on crows, and I know there's either a teammate or a killer down there. Looks like we got a Jane coming in. We're going to group, we're going to stack and heal after we complete the gen. Keeping in mind that the Adam and the Jane are both solo queue right now. Looks like we're not going to get enough time to do that. We're going to do that. I, I can see a totem then when I looked. I have a good gut feeling that it's horned ground. Looks like she's chasing me, but I am going to be able to utilize a window. I'm going to just keep running. I'm going to double back right now. That was really good tracking by her. I think she phased for a long time. I shouldn't run her back based on the fact that my teammate... Oh, that was a bad spot to get revealed. I had to dead hard. Unfortunately, I made a misplay there. I do have a pallet down here on the left that I can utilize as well. Nice lunge. Let's see what she decides to do. I know she has her phase active. I know there's one gen le left as well. That should be enough. Nice. That was just a little bit of counting. She only phases at 176% movement speed. So kind of just calculating how long it's going to take her to do that. Block her line of sight and dip in a completely different direction. Now, I am leaving scratch marks, which can be a mistake. You can see there's somebody on an objective down here. Ooh. She'll go straight for the gen. She won't go for me. Based on the fact it's nearly completed. Ooh, she actually went for me. This leaving the scratch marks and then stopping was definitely a good call on my double backing there. There's going to be an adrenaline. Multiple people healed with adrenaline, including three, in, even being the one that she just did hit then. However, we know she has a lit totem. Has she hooked anyone through Devour Hope? Therefore, there's no point in breaking that totem. It can't be known. There is no lethality from having that totem up. If there were three stacks of Devour, then I would recommend breaking that. Because there's not, right now breaking that, having so many people on full health, will hurt the team. If everybody was injured, then breaking that would be fine. I'm going to 99 the door, and I'm going to go back through the map through walking to see if I am able to get my dead hide back. He's nowhere near 
This is good. He's nowhere near the base. Ooh, actually, is he? She could take it to the basement. She didn't based on how he moved then. That's fine. So we're waiting for dead hard right now. Unfortunately, there's no one on the other door. In a perfect world, they wouldn't hook save him. I would prep the other door. Then we'd make a play. But it is solo queue. So we have to be very careful right now. And that was just a farm under hook, which was a bad play, knowing there are multiple people coming in for the save. She could have been a little bit more patient and made it work. However, my teammate might have BT on him and go for a BT hit right now into a save. He's going to be applying pressure to the door. I'm going to wait with him. I'm going to heal him. And then I'm going to come back in. Seeing how he's stuck to the door for a long period of time, that kind of makes me think he has access to DS here. I'm going to go straight to the door while the other guy, Adam, is going to be getting the save, which is fine. We group, we stack, we heal, then we apply pressure. Let's see what she does. If she picks him up, I'm in a good spot. If he has DS, he can run straight to the door and I'll take the hit for him. No DS. Door is going to be prepped at 99%. I'm going to heal my teammate here. It'd be the right call, even if she has DS. Multiple people, no point in holding on to the make it. We all get healed. Then we run straight for the killer. She can't hit everyone at once. It's going to be good. Keep going. Split up. One hit. They open the door. The other two go for the save. One takes a body block hit. Looks like the other guy's just going to be going for the door as well. I'm going to take a hit in the back now. He has BT to save me. Adam is Meyer and unaccounted for. I do have access to Dead Hard. Looks like Adam was waiting in front of the door. That is a common play that you'll see in solo queue, that the Adam could have been there, but instead... I was lucky that I gave my teammate BT to take the hit as well. Anyways, guys, GG's well played. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you slap that subscribe button. I do do informative, educational, dead by daylight, survivor, and killer content five days a week over at Twitch if you guys want to pop into the live streams. And if you think you know everything about DVD, you can help me teach people that do not. Anyways, guys, GG's well played, and I will see you in the fog in the next video.